Today we are going to review the basic configuration of eBoxes. By the end of this video, you will understand the different query options for eBoxes and know all the device configuration settings in the basic air config mode. We will be completing this video in the basic air config mode. First, you will need to right click on the eBox driver and select Query Devices. You will see all the devices in radio range. This is the N-Ocean query. Right click the eBox you wish to configure and select Connect through TCP IP. You will notice that the firmware box in the device configuration has lit up green. This notifies you of the successful TCP IP connection. We strongly suggest that you use TCP IP when configuring your devices, as you will be configuring over Ethernet communication. This is a faster way to read and send configuration. As always, make sure that you read the configuration of the device you are looking to configure. You will notice some values changing in the device configuration column. Once the configuration is read, right click on the eBox and select End Learn Mode. There is another way to manually query eBoxes. If you right click on the eBox driver and select Manual IP Query, you will be able to enter in the eBox IP address on screen. You will need to know the IP address of the eBox in order to move forward. Since we are able to access the eBox we wish to configure over TCP IP, we are not going to be manually querying the eBox. We will now go over your options in the Device Configuration tab. The Network tab is where you will be able to adjust the network settings on the eBox. The first line has a series of checkboxes. If you uncheck the DHCP box, you will be able to set a static IP address, subnet mask, and gateway. Checking WLAN allows you to set up a wireless connection with the eBox. You can choose to add a SSID and security settings for wireless access. The device MAC address will appear as NA until you read the configuration. At the bottom are the control firmware options. You can choose to reboot the eBox, reset it to factory default, or print your current configuration settings for future reference after you are done setting the eBox up. Finally, the firmware shows the firmware version, and once again it will be highlighted in green when you are connected through TCP IP. The configuration tab is where you can specifically configure the eBox. The TCM info section is where you will see information on the N-Ocean Dolphin chip within the eBox. The type section is where you will see frequency information. The back next section is where you can set the ID for the devices. The factory default ID is 123. In the XML file section, you can select the files in Celsius, Fahrenheit, or create a custom file. The XML file defines how N-Ocean devices are translated to backneck points. Finally, in the Update Check section, you can choose when your eBox will update its firmware and XML files. Both the Celsius and Fahrenheit files will be updated during this time, but any custom XML files will not auto-update. You will need to update them manually as needed. Moving on to the Inputs tab, here you will be able to drag over identified sensors to create input points for the eBox. When you drag over a device, you will notice that the BACnet ID is set to Auto. After you send the configuration to the eBox and read it out again, the eBox will have assigned BACnet IPs. In the Output tab, you will be able to create output points to communicate to the NOcean actuators. To do this, select the sensor profile you want, then the manufacturer, and press the plus button to add it to the output list. The manufacturer ID will only be used for an N-Ocean teaching telegram. Once again, the outputs will have assigned BACnet IPs. They will be set when you send the configuration. There is one additional way you can access your eBox configuration. When you first open the AirConfig software, you will have the option of selecting a USB port. Select the option BACnet IP port and start AirConfig up in basic configuration. Now, all devices connected over BACnet IP will be visible without any queries. As you can see, we only need to click on the eBox device for our eBox to be listed. If you configure your eBox using BACnet IP port, you will not be able to utilize any USB transceiver. However, you can utilize the eBox radio, which we will discuss in a later video. That concludes the tutorial on eBox configuration in basic air config mode. You now should understand the different query options for eBoxes and know all of the device configuration settings in basic air config mode. Subscribe for more tutorial videos on all of the Magnum Energy Solution product line. And if you have any questions, you can find our contact information in the description below.